felt for the biggest scam ever. College, it got me. <laughs> oh, biggest scam ever. In high school, in high school, I was up for the dollars. I was up. Now I'm down 60 grand. <laughs> All my friends like, hey, but what was your major? Bankruptcy, motherfucker. That's my major. <laughs> Bankruptcy. <laughs> Graduated from college, I got a job in sales. I'm trying to sell my degree on eBay. <laughs> and get my money back. <laughs> Buy it now. Anybody want it? Piece of sheet of paper. <laughs> Biggest scam ever. Every class had to get a damn book. <laughs> All that tuition I paid, they owe me a, some a iPad and some apps. Every class teacher's like, all right, you gotta get this book. It's $500, and we're only concentrating on chapters two, four, and six. And I'm the author. Fuck you. <laughs> what? I'm a student, not your biggest fan. I'll buy your book after the class if I like you. Hey, don't worry, you can return the book at the bookstore and get the value back. That's bullshit. I returned my $500 book. This lady gave me $4 back. I said, I'm not leasing the car. I didn't even use this. You got a Blue Kelly book for this book? Book? What's the value? I need some ramen noodles to eat tonight. I tried to get out of it. I went to a big old institute, tried to transfer to another college, a community college, something cheaper so I can afford. But you know, colleges, they act like two women that hate each other. <laughs> I don't know that bitch. I don't know that bitch. I don't accept her credits. <laughs> I had to start all over. <laughs> I said, education is the same shit. They looked at me like I was spending Disney money in the strip club. <laughs> You take Goofies, bitch? <laughs> Donald's? No, I take Jackson's. <laughs> all in all, I got out good. I didn't get pregnant. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not get pregnant. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasms. I'm your host, Will. Thank you for listening and tuning in. So, yes, you heard it. The biggest scam is college. It's not money. It's not crypto. It's not whatever people think it is. It is fucking college. And we all fall for it. We're talking about this because what? School is about to start for any and everybody. And you know what? I'm not doing this by myself today. I'm joined by my special guest from the All Over Podcast. I would love to welcome one half of the duo because I only got one joining me. But I would love to welcome my guest. How you doing tonight, Zion? Um... I needed that laugh. I ain't going to hold you. That joke, because that is the, exactly how... I ain't going to lie. I did the same thing. Started out at an institution and was like, nah, because a bit off more than I get you. Uh-huh. Went to a community college, and I had that same issue. They act like they ain't want to... Y'all teaching me the same thing. They was like, I don't know that bitch. And you're like, I yeah, start all over. I also have their credit. Say so you got credit. That some of them are transferable. Others are not. So you think you take it. Ones that go everywhere. Nope. This is bullshit. Nah, but the bright side of that was the New, the New York State governor actually just signed a um, joint uh, Say, oh, no. I think they did take the credits. And I was like, I owe somebody a little money. And they was like, nah, you can't get these credits. <laughs> but then the governor was like, nah, you can't hold this credit. So I was like, appreciate it. I might vote for you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. So we're talking about college, the biggest scam ever to anybody. And like you said, when you started high school, you was up forty dollars. Now you down sixty grand. Like, right? We're not taught about that. We're not taught about that, especially, especially in our last what two or three semesters in school. So going into like our junior to our senior year, we don't even have like a six week course. Yeah, make sure you take this course so you don't end up getting a credit card that's going to screw you over for the next 20 years of your life bro <laughs> <laughs> nah you know it's crazy you know how i feel about college it's like i mean and I, I, i'll say for minorities i'll say maybe specifically black people but i'll just say minorities in general we talk about our parents tell us about college from the time we in kindergarten to mm-hmm. like you said junior senior year of high school 
then it's summer before college come all right where the money at for college oh we ain't got the money for you yeah so it's like now our first step into the adult world the first lesson we learned as an adult is debt Uh uh-huh uh uh-huh. and then you get there your like first couple of weeks or even two months on campus oh you ain't got no money no money to pay here you go here's a credit card we're going to get you give you this it's going to have the highest apr ever in your life and then you'll be suffering for the next 15 to 20 years of your life because you don't know what a budget is that, that wasn't taught so who gives a fuck he was like Ooh, thousand dollar limit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's how they get you thousand dollar limit. You got two five hundred dollar books. There go the credit card right there. Now you can't pay it off. Mm-hmm. And you broke for the rest of it, and you you don't know. Like we don't know about minimum payment. We don't know about the thirty percent rule. We don't know right. anything about it. Like our statement date, our due date. No one teaches you anything like that. And I think it's really unfair that we don't even have an economics class. And in high school, just in high school alone, just to teach us just what about a credit card can do for us, what debt can do to us, any and everything. It's high school teach us everything but what we need to know. I can tell you how many wars Genghis Khan won, but I don't, I couldn't tell you how to make a cake. Like, they got rid of home economics. That seemed like that was from the 90s. I'll be watching movies back in the day, like home economics they don't teach that no more i don't know in my high school well i guess i'm a little different because i went to white high school so i had two home economics i had american food and regional food and then i had lunch right after that so i had three periods just straight food food. (laughs) just straight food (laughs) no i went to i went to so my first two years high school i went to a white high school Mm-hmm. He had a home economics. The last two years, I went. To, I think actually, I think they did at the black high school. I think they did have home economics. I didn't take it though, but it was. I feel like it should have been mandatory. To learn how to cook, I had moved back home with my dad, and he don't like cooking sometimes. And I was like, I'm not finna eat noodles tonight, so I had to learn how to make these gourmet meals. And then at the time, I had a girlfriend, and I was like, you know, you had to cook for the girl. You got to impress them. So I'm chefing mm-hmm. it up for her. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'd never forget. Um, we we had type of high school, so we had like foreign exchange students, and we had this. I don't know if he was Asian, Japanese, whatever he was. So he came, and this is one class where we was cooking rice roni, and we was like, "Yeah, this is what we make in America." And he was like, "Well, this is not how they do it in Japan." And we like, "Fuck how they do it in Japan. <laughs> this is how we do it here." <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we take we take that rice and roll and we put it in the skillet with a little bit of water, sizzle that up, you know, put Yo, the top over. I was <laughs> I think I was sixteen years old and I found out that ramen is actually like a delicacy over there. Like that's like fancy stuff over there. Uh-huh. Cause I was talking I was on one of them yeah, man, I was on one of them stupid um talk to strangers on the internet webcam sites or whatever. Don't judge me, y'all. I did a lot of dumb stuff. I'll tell y'all about some of it one day. But anyway, so I get this Japanese person. I'm eating noodles. They was like, they like, what's that? You must have money. I said, it's a pack of noodles. It was like, yeah, you must be ripped. I'm like, nope. I went to the kitchen, pulled out the orange pack. This is what it mm-hmm. came in. Yep. They said, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I said, it's noodles. They I put, opened it. It was all dry. They said, we. They was like, that's not how we. I said, this is how we do it. Wow. Well, I see like my college experience, I never forget. I had um I had a a real drunk, a real drunk counselor. And I've talked about it in a couple of episodes that I done. Her name was Miss Grant. Never forget. She was a hoe and a drunk. She slept with the principal, ruined his marriage and then ruined her marriage because counseling was not in the works now this is white people so and this is an marriage counselor you trying to counsel kids <laughs> yes yes so she was she didn't care about none of her black students and it was apparent it always happened so in my high school um year before i graduated it was 40 percent black the year i graduated 16 16 out of like 1200 students yes 
my graduating class was like 700 and something so you could just That's imagine how, how it was at my white school it was like out of like it was it wasn't necessarily racism going on but just, it was just crazy how like out of like 900 kids it was like 50 black kids mm -hmm. yeah because my uh where i lived at at the time there was a catholic high school they used to poach all the good black kids and make them come play like, for yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I know a school like that. That's not mm -hmm. school. I'm, I went to the smart school. We used to get our ass whipped at football. How <laughs> <laughs> they go to the school that they was poaching? <laughs> yep, they poached. We got it. spanked at football. Uh huh. Your academic school. But here's the thing: the school was so bad, but the boosters were so good. They would donate, like donate money, money. Like they had three baseball fields, and the baseball team didn't even win a championship. Not even let alone make it to the conference. Friends, they suck for 20 years and got three that's baseball like the, fields. The rich people that got a piano, a grand piano, and a night hallway. Like, oh, you play? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> Just decoration. <laughs> so my my uh thing, she was like, Yeah, well, you don't need to take the SATs because SATs don't matter if you're going to um a junior college or community college. I'm like, I think I'll take it anyway. So I took it, and back then I got like eleven hundred. And this is before they expanded, so you can just know how old I am. Right. Um, but then, yeah, I got 1100 and she was like, well, I'm glad you took it. W where are we going? I'm like, well, bitch, where am I going? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know how white people like to use that, that right. term, we. Yeah. Like, we didn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I went, I went to a community college for a semester because it was good enough, but it still wasn't good enough according to the uh the university i went to and then it was like this is stupid i should have just straight went to the university because all my friends went i missed out on parties and all that shit but after i did basically my what 80 days or whatever it was i went straight to the university and i was good but i still think college was a scam because you put in all that work and then like it's no good than the piece of paper like he said and it's just, it doesn't prepare kids for real life. It really doesn't. Especially when you get an advisor that don't even care. Like, my advisor was worse than my actual counselor. Because I never saw that fool. Never. <laughs> I you, saw him once. Did you take the ACC? No, nah, because, see, I, um, I went to, I grew up in Pennsylvania. So, we, we just need to take the SAT. And that was okay. it. Okay. That was it. The, the ACT is not a requirement in the state of Pennsylvania. Oh, I took the ACT. That's right. I didn't think I, I, I was going to do as good as I did. Turns out I'm a genius. Just to, so y'all know, you know, I just thought I'd share that. I'm a genius. <laughs> no, nah, um, <clears throat> nah, but I, you, you, you know, you hit right on the nail. Like college, it's people be like, oh, well, college, you go for the experience. What experience? Okay, for an experience. I can go, I can buy, book a cruise if I want an experience. Mm hmm. I mean, if I want to learn how to, like, stand upside down and drink beer, I can just do that at home by myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I don't, like, I feel like, first of all, I feel like college is forced on a lot of kids because our parents and grandparents grew up at a time where if you didn't have a degree, you were, it, you were, like, set up for failure, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's not the world we live in now. Like, I was just talking to my cousin. My cousin did one of those online coding boot camps. And now she's an engineer for a uh, key bank. And uh, I looked it up. An engineering degree costs anywhere between forty thousand to ninety thousand dollars. She paid fifteen. Okay. So I was like, okay. "There's plenty of alternatives to college that people like." Honestly, I feel like college might be done with. Maybe not this generation, but probably by the time like me and you have kids, or even our kids' kids, colleges might be done with because there's it's no purpose for them. No, there's not. Because if we can learn at a level to where we don't need to put well, four years in it. I'm not going to say that. Like, I, I always say, if you want to be a doctor or a lawyer or something like that, okay, you got to go to college. But he, like a prime example, my cousin, if you want to be an engineer, if you want to be, look, if you want to be a business owner, do, don't go to bis, don't go to business school. Uh, but look into the camera and say, that is, do not go to business school expecting, <laughs> like, oh, this going to make me a great, no, that's, they don't, just don't. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, network. Networking can get you in places that a degree won't. And that's just the cold hard truth.
Yeah, brother, it can. And it's just unfair, the expectations that are put on people that you need to get in college because you're robbing these kids of four years. And hell, some of them don't even make it past the first year. I remember a lot of my friends that I went to college with, they didn't even make it because life hit them. And when life does hit you, you still try. But it's almost like you can't you can't muster through it. You and really the truth can. is, and I think <clears throat> I don't know why this is such a hard concept concept for older people to grasp. College really isn't for everybody. No, everybody like some people can sit and get taught whatever life, whatever you want to say. College is for some people can be like you can sit in the classroom and you can teach them. That. Other people they got to go out into the world and fail a few times or succeed a few times. Like it's just uh, uh, sitting down in the classroom setting is not the best learning environment for everybody. So forcing people to go to college is a waste of it's a waste of their time. It's a waste of you know room because they don't even want to be there yet. There's somebody who wants to be there but can't because the class is full. Uh-huh. It's just it, it's it's such a waste and I, it, it's it's upsetting that they, that college is forced on a lot of kids out of high school, specifically like minority kids. Yeah, and especially um, when you got these places that like trades are paying more than an actual two or four year degree. Like a two year trade pays you more than a four year degree. And you think about that trades. And yes, I don't, I don't know why. Well, that's because it's like we kind of like, for lack of a better word, demonize trades. Like, oh, you just apply. Like, if you were to, like back when we was going to middle school, you know, grade school, whatever. We, if you were to say, my dad's a plumber. Oh, your dad's a plumber? Oh, he, like, he don't make no money. Plumbers make bank because you always going, plumbing always going to be around. People always going to need to take shit. People always going to need electricity. People always going to need their cars fixed. Like, trades is where it's at, for real, for real. Yep, like the one quote is, um, there's, and I'm just paraphrasing, he was like, there are colleges, there are trade schools. He was like, trade schools? Trade schools are stu- for tu- for stupid people. No. Prison is for stupid people. So that's what people need to understand. They're just more than just going to college, whether it be a two-year degree or a four-year degree. You can get that trade school and do more than what you think you can. But not everybody is willing to take that 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 initiative to find out. Like, of course, you have these high schools that do these career days, but not everybody's going. They just think it's a fucking free period. I mean, I know I did, but I went because I'm like, well, let me check it out. And then I ended up learning about, you know, broadcasting and journalism. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I could do this. But kids just don't take it. And now I think it's even worse because you know, social media is just so much more bigger than it was when I was in high school that is really damaging kids to actually be an individual and find out what is out there, especially when everything is at your your fingertips. I'm glad you said that because I want to loop back to that. But I something what you said, um, <clears throat> I feel like I feel like as far as trades, people feel like if they go to a trade school, they lesser than, or even trades and community college, like you lesser than a person that has a four year degree where if you come out, if, especially if you go to trade school, right out of trade school, you can have jobs on deck as opposed to how many people come out of high school. I mean, come out of college, four year college, and then end up working at Foot Locker for two years because they can't find a job in a degree field. Uh-huh. And then they're in more huge debt. Like it's almost like take for instance, nurse. I know with me working in the in the hospital, you got ASN and you got BSN, assistant nursing and assistant nursing, whatever, and <laughs> a bachelor's. Yeah, associate nursing and bachelor's yeah, nursing. Yeah. It's the same thing, but it's just two more years, two more years. at it. And then you got another year and a half of doing a residency. Y'all make almost relatively the same money. And y'all do the same exact thing, right. except one has two more years on you. Like, who gives a damn? You're still a goddamn nurse. Like, honestly, it makes no sense to me. I I hate that that stigma that is put on someone just because you think you got two more years up on me makes you better than me. No, bitch, it doesn't. It really doesn't. And I think it's really unfair that the level of pressure that is put on these kids going out of high school into college starting like oh these are going to be the best four years of my, of my life no it's not because not everybody's going to make it they're really not and you know the thing <clears throat> especially now more than ever you got to think like certain people are going to go and 
are going to go into job fields and are destined for job fields that don't even exist yet. You feel me? Like, you got to think. When Mark Zuckerberg was a baby, Facebook didn't exist, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, even when we was babies, Snapchat didn't exist. Now, right now, today, I can go and get a job as a Snapchat developer. You feel me? So sometimes, like, we growing, we are in such a technological era and everything's growing so fast. Like, you could be destined for a job that don't even exist yet, but yeah, you force your child to go to school. So instead of, you know, being the next creator of something great, they work in so did you ever see that movie with Tyler Perry called Good Deeds? Yeah, I did. All right, remember that man ran a million, might have been a billion dollar, but we'll say million dollar corporation and was unhappy. Hated it, but did it uh-huh. because his parents wanted him to. Yeah. This man wanted to be in Africa riding bikes or something. He, he, and they, he, I'm like, I would have ran a corporation million dollars but that, that wasn't what he wanted to do but his parents he felt forced to do that mm, and that's another thing people pick security over over just wanting to live and just see how things go like for instance my job I make good money every week but I have a stigma on me because since I make all this money, I should have all this knowledge. No, it don't work like that. You can't get mad at me that I pick money over security because I want more than what I'm worth. Why do I want to work a job to where I get paid $1,200 every two weeks to where I can do the same thing and get paid every week and make instead of $2,400 a month, damn near $4,800 a month. Like make that make sense. And that's the thing. So many of us grew up in, uh, uh, like, grew up with parents who were like, "Oh yeah, go to college, get a job, work for this year, go work hard, however many many years, forty whatever, and get a pension." Who wants to work to get a pension? You know? Yes. Uh huh. Just to sit, just to sit and just try to like be broke every month after the fifth. Like, <laughs> my biggest thing is, especially now, they give us as young people, they give us all the tools to retire a millionaire. Put your money in the Roth IRA, save it. Da 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 da. My thing is, who wants to retire a millionaire? Father time, excuse me, father time always going to catch up with you. So you're going to retire, have all this money, but you can't jet ski and parachute and do all the stuff you want to do in your 20s and 30s. Mm-hmm. Give us the tools that we need so that we can be a millionaire by 35 or we can retire at 35. And now we can do all this this young people stuff instead of waiting until 65 when we, we need a hip replacement. The, the yeah. million dollars we spent going towards surgeries every week. <laughs> And I'll say this, so I'll go back to, you know, talking about two-year degrees, four-year degrees. Also, um, getting um, certificates. Those help, too. Those, uh, I'll never forget. I remember I interviewed for Google maybe about five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. And I got into the program because I had a comp TIA certificate, meaning that it was an entry-level position on knowing the the basics on background um on uh engineering well not engineering but like computers and stuff like that like programming yeah there you go programming sorry yes so i had a comtia programming certificate i beat out people who have five and six year degrees because one i was an entry level and i wasn't looking to make much money but then i was cheap and then i was inexpensive so sometimes it pays to be a little bit uh a little bit dumb to the fact because you can get in and then build on that and build on your resume just like you said earlier it's about networking about who you know and building those relationships they don't teach you that in college they don't teach you how to network they just preach to you yes work 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 and your work will pay off fuck that it will not i like what you said i'm gonna go back to that but people have like made education and college synonymous Everyone mm-hmm. should get some type of education after high school, but that don't mean go to college. Nope. For some people, that might mean go out here and live life. Like I said, make some mistakes. F up, you know, fall on your face a few times and learn that way. Other people, it might be go to trade school. Education might be college for a lot of people, but education is not as education and, syno- and college are not synonymous. You don't yeah. have to go to college to obtain an education. True. Very true. You don't have to. And it people don't listen. And they don't because everybody's in their ear uh, saying, oh, we need to get you prepared. Like people start preparing their kids for college 
beginning of junior year, hell, even in their sophomore year. For what reason? You're putting more pressure on them than they already need to. Right, and then when they be like, I don't want to go to college, I want to be an artist, or I want to be this, I want to be some something that's deemed, you know, not obtainable, or, you know, that can't, or they say, I want to be an actor, I want to be a rapper, and it's like, no, you're going to go to college, because then you're for sure get a job. Or, I could focus on this thing that I really want to do, hone my craft into the point where I, it's able to make me income and I can be, you know, if not a millionaire, a hundred thousand there or something. Yeah. Just let me live my life so I can go be a DJ and manage the best buy. <laughs> right. Like <laughs> I, one of my favorite stories, I think this, like, I think this is why a lot of parents and grandparents fear not going to college because we don't have this luxury. But one of my favorite stories is how GoPro was founded. The dude was out of, he was either out of high school, I think he was out of college, and he didn't know what he wanted to do with his life. Mind you, his parents are rich, so they gave him some money and said, go find yourself. So dudes all over the world traveling, doing whatever he wants, he's surfing one day and he thinks, hmm, it'd be cool if I could mount a camera to the tip of this surfboard and get like a cool angle on it. Goes back to his parents, they give him... Think two hundred, either two hundred thousand or two million dollars. Boom, GoPro. Uh huh. Uh huh. It was the best camera ever. I remember I just sold those when I worked for a headphones company. Those were some good cameras. Even thinking GoPro? about, yeah, I saw tons of them. Um, back when it was, so I think they're at the GoPro six. When it was like GoPro three and four, I sold some of them. You got it early. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, really good cameras, really good ones. You can't beat them, especially with them being waterproof. Oh man, <laughs> come on now, come on now. That was a that was a great event. You must be getting the ad from GoPro. You just gave them a whole lot of free promo. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. I just I'm about to buy it uh, for my company. So. Oh yeah, well come on, share the. Oh, I don't know. You you go. Is that public? There? Oh no, man. I can share it. No problem. Yeah, go so What's okay, the so. I look at it this way, Sar sarcasm, orgasm, it's for podcast, yes, but it's either going to be a hobby or a business. A hobby, you cannot make money. A business, you can make money if you do it right. So I look at it this way, start my own production company. And with my own production company, I'm basically doing everything. And I mean everything between the booking, such as, you know, working with Zion and I've worked with Norm and I've worked with all the people I work with to doing the editing, to doing the promotion, to doing the filming, everything. Basically what a production company does. So right. I was thinking like, hmm, I could really turn this into the business. So um, I'm not going to release the name just yet, but... I will, everything will be under the umbrella of what my company is going to be called. And plus, I'm going to have a studio too, so I can have two businesses simultaneously that is running through sarcasm, orgasm, among other things. Um, I look at it like I want more than just what I'm doing. And I'm being a forward thinker and trying to go and get more because no one's going to give this to me. Like, no one gave this to me and i'm sure just like no one gave you know all over to you and norm so i'm i'm trying to do more than what i'm actually doing uh so this business that i have created like i'm creating my <clears throat> i'm creating my own lane because i'm trying to be a forward thinker about this i just don't want to like do a podcast and after two years i get sick of it no i want more so that's my thing it's crazy because i did the same exact thing i just started my llc and Right now, I'm starting. Um, I'm I'm about to purchase an ATM machine and a vending machine and have those placed. That's gonna be my first business. Eventually, it's gonna be something that it's gonna lead to something else. So I'm just using this as like to get my foot in that you know that yep. entrepreneurship. But I would I really want to do something else that I'm not gonna speak on quite yet. Mm -hmm. but, um, it, it's like you said. It's you know. First of all, I feel like mm, 2020. I feel like I like you know having your own side hustle or whatnot became very popular. Entrepreneurship became popular, but at the same time, I feel like people started to demonize a nine to five. There's nothing wrong with working a nine to five. No problem is when that's your only source of income. 
because I believe that if you allow one hand to feed you, that same hand can starve you. Mm-hmm. Thus, what we saw in the pandemic, Facts. people lost their jobs, and then what? Oh my God, what am I going to do? I don't have no other source of income. So, you know, while I say everybody shouldn't, don't have to be a full-time entrepreneur, we need cops, we need firefighters, we need nurses, we need, you know, mechanics and all that. Well, that could be entrepreneur, but, you know, we need these, you know, things that can't necessarily be owned by, everybody can't have their own thing, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. at least have a side hustle, something, some extra income coming in. So, yeah, I just, like, got my own LLC, and I'm going to do the same thing you're doing. Like, all the businesses that I form are going to come up under that umbrella. Yep. Yep, uh, and I did my research too, and that and that's one of the things that people need to really uh, heed to. Before you say I'm gonna start my own business, look it up first, research it, know what you're getting yourself into. Because when I looked in production, when I looked into pr- photography, you gotta find your niche. You really do because once you do, you know what avenues to go. You know how to market it and then monetize it. Or well, yeah, yeah man. Well, for the people who don't know, monetize is basically making money off of it, you know, while while it's going on, whether it be passive or non-passive. But it still is like you got to know what you're getting yourself into before you say, oh, I'm going to start my business. Well, how are you going to start it if you don't know your information? Like you got to look up the LLC, how much is it going to cost? Cost. Yeah, it varies from state to state because it does. It's 200, but in some places it's 50. I was like, yo. I can't move there. Two hundred dollars. Well, in Michigan, where I'm from, it's cost me two fifty. Two fifty. And then also I need to trademark the logo that I'm gonna mm-hmm. use. And I got two logos. So I mean I'm already gonna be spending six hundred dollars even before I even start. Or you even that's the crazy yep. thing. Like mm-hmm. I'm doing going through the same thing. But, you know, I got two hundred for the LLC, then there's other expenses that go before I even launch my first product. I'm spending an amount that ain't your business. <laughs> I'll tell Will, but <laughs> you know, yeah, that's like, yeah, there's like uh, I was talking to my one home girl who I met when I was in St. Louis. She was like, "Well, the biggest passive income that you can make the best money is photography, because you can charge as much as you want for whatever you want, however many hours." So I got to get a camera. That's really good. That's like six hundred dollars right there, just for just for a starter. Not the highest one. We're talking a right. starter camera. You can get a camera that's you know two, three grand. Uh huh. Yes, but I'm not. I'm not up there yet. Right. Still, like I said, it's just building, building things on top of this production company that I'm having to where I can expand out, and the podcast will be the bridge to it all. Because without this podcast, I never would have had no type of idea on where I wanted to go. So right. you know. And just going back to what is going, you know, college can teach you a lot. It can teach you how to be open minded. It can teach you how to think for yourself and be forward thinkers. But not everybody gets that opportunity to go to college and find themselves, quote unquote, because not everybody is willing to take a chance on themselves. Like you still have people who don't even want to leave their hometown because it's all they know. That's all they know. But you've got to leave to know, are you strong enough out there like you are in your hometown? And, like, because I, I see a, it's a similar post that pop up on, on social media all the time. You can come back home. You don't have to move permanently. You can move somewhere. I lived in Virginia for two years. It was like, I don't like this. But, you know, I know that is more to life than what I saw growing up. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I grew up on east y'all people not from buffalo i grew up on the east side of buffalo yeah it ain't it ain't nothing special you know so it let moving to virginia i was like it's more to life than you know what i see in my what i saw growing up but then i moved back but now you know i'm able to my whole thing when i started my business was i'm able to give opportunities that you know that i didn't have when i was younger so i mean my whole thing is i want to create opportunities for people who look like me who are in my community that you know just don't have opportunity me and norm were just talking as far as like music wise and just media uh acting movies whatever it's a lot of talent in buffalo but we just don't have no opportunities here it's not la it's not philly it's not new york it's nobody thinks about us well because honestly no one wants to come here after october not for real <laughs> 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 no, I, I just I had I had that discussion because I'm up here in upstate and I'm close mm-hmm. to you as you know. But I like I told my recruiter, I'm not trying to stay here past Halloween because 
I like snow. Just, Look, I you're from like Detroit. Like it's the same thing, ain't it? No, 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 no. It's not, bro. No, y'all, y'all get snowstorms bigger than Detroit. For bigger real? than Detroit, for real, for real. Y'all sit on Lake Michigan, don't y'all? Yeah, we do. Y'all don't get that lake effect snow? Sometimes. Some. Oh, see, that's what that's what we get in Buffalo. That lake effect snow that blow off Lake Erie. That's what we get. That's what that bad weather come from. Mm. Nah, nah, brother, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. I just so, can't. Stay, stay, because you leave it. I know where you leave. Stay another month. Stay an extra month. Mm-mm. I don't even want to stay an extra day. I don't know where you go. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> snow ain't that bad. Yeah, it, it is bad. Remember, we're black folks. We're tropical folks. We don't like nothing cold. That's Let's, bad. That's yeah. Bad. Well, I say that now, but when I have to be out there shoveling, I'm like, damn, Will was uh-huh. right, man. Yep, I know, right? <laughs> But but no, um, so let's get back into it. So tell me, what is like your biggest college story that is like you said, yeah, this shit ain't for me, or it is for me, but I don't know if it is right now. Um, I mean, besides the price, I just I'm not gonna lie, I felt like I was pressured into college. I'm in college now, don't want to be, but it's like I got like a year left, so it's, I done bitched him off for three years, I might as well just finish it out. But mm-hmm. it's like you know, like I said, my first step into the adult world is gonna be dead. I tried my hardest not to take out no loans. I had to take out. I took out one. It was small, but it's still the fact I didn't want to take out no loans. My whole goal was let's go at least get through undergrad without taking out loans because I was only gonna go through undergrad because I don't like school at all. I didn't like grade two. I don't like middle school. I don't like high school. I don't like school at all. So people was like, "Oh, you should get your master's in business." First of all, no. <laughs> I'll answer that for you. <laughs> I get my mask because first we go, we can get to that later but it's yeah I just it's the price you know like the cheapest school in this area for one semester cost five thousand dollars and the problem with like student loan forgiveness and all that is it's in the hands of people who don't have to go through that I was just doing some research when Joe Biden went to school for f- four years of college cost him five thousand dollars well, one semester, co- one semester cost me five thousand. He was able to go through four years of college for five thousand. So these people don't know what we're going through. So that's why, like, the price of education keep going up, up, up because nobody's here. But like, oh no, that's not right. When we complain, they be like, they give us the back in my day. You know, we don't like care. It's not your day no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. And then it's all. And then it's those people who went, got all the way to the end, be like, oh. Let me quit because I can't do this. So it's also those two. I mean, I I wouldn't. I'm not against that. I feel like because my biggest thing is you should live for yourself. And if you feel like a college degree ain't gonna do nothing, for, like I said, as far as business owners, don't go to college. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. That's probably why I feel the way I feel about college, low key. Because I'm like, I'm gonna be a business owner. I'm gonna go to school for business administration, and it's. These niggas ain't talking about owning the business. Everything I've learned about learning the business, I'm learning on my own in a matter of the six months I've been researching. Uh-huh. As opposed to the past two years, <laughs> I don't learn more in six months than I did my own self. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Education and, synon- and, and college are not synonymous. <laughs> no, they're not. Um, it's just messed up that not everybody's really using the information that is right at our fingertips. Like we can Google any and everything. But we never Google what we want to do with our life. That matters. Yes. Like everybody says they want to be an entrepreneur. Okay. What type of entrepreneur you want to be? What type of business do you want to have that is not going to be the same thing else? Like I'm tired of hearing people say, oh, I'm going to start a restaurant business. Like, nigga, do you understand that restaurants go out of business within the first yeah, two and a half years? Yeah, that's a high percentage of restaurants that fail in the first two years. Yes. I don't care if you can cook. You have to know how to cook and run a business efficiently. Mm-hmm. Or get you a business partner, one who can run the kitchen, the other one who can run the books, but right. also get someone you can trust. Like, I, I'm i not putting a damper on anybody's dream. I'm not. Hell, I don't want someone to do it to mine. But you got to be strong-minded and very determined, like, this shit is going to work out no matter what I do. No matter who gets in my way, it's going to pan out. But you got weak-minded people out here. You really you gotta, do. Part of being, like... It's life, but it's even just being your own boss, entrepreneurship, however you want to call it. You got to take risk, man. You Sometimes you just got to step out there. 
step out on that water and be like, yo, I might walk on water, I might sink. But you know what? I'm gonna learn something. Nah, people are way too comfortable. Nobody wants to, you know, they only want to do the shallow toe dip just to see how cold it is. But they don't want to put their full and foot then in And then when that. they get that that freeze, they'd be like, well, wasn't for me. I'm done. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm just going to sit here kicking on the beach because it's it's safe. Everybody wants to be safe, but everybody still say they want to take a chance. What chance are you taking if you never go out into the water and find out? Drake got a line, and this one I'm not a big Drake fan, but it's one of my favorite lines. It's that song he did called Moment for Life with Nicki Minaj. And the last line he says, Everybody dies, but not everybody lives. And that is like it's it's enough said. You know, it's more to life than like you said, your hometown, your small hometown. Go even if you don't move somewhere for a couple years, travel. It's people who I know people personally who just won't they have the funds. They like, what do I need to leave for? Dog? This mm -hmm. Nick, travel. Go what? to LA. Go to out the country. Go anywhere. Bro, I know. I grew up in a small town. My high school that I was at, it was in a small town. But my dad, he was so adamant about my brother and I not being not having that small mind mentality that he moved us away and then we came back. And then when we got old enough, we left. We right. and we've never been back. I mean, I've been there a few times to visit my stepmom and some of my friends that I still keep in contact with. But it's just the fact of getting up and going because once you get up and going and you build that mentality, nothing can stop you. And That's people eventually stop my people. Plan. Like I came back to Buffalo, but trust and believe, I'm not going to die here. <laughs> I love Buffalo. That. I love I love Buffalo to death. You know, I may talk stuff about the city like most people do, but. I, I love the city, but it's not somewhere where I want to spend my entire life. You sure? I'll come back because I'm going to have businesses here and charities and all of that. But as far as me living here, mm -mm. I mean, bro, it sounds like you just you you live there and you want to die there. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but um, I feel like like you said so earlier about passive income. You know, I think that people have to learn like if you're not making money in your sleep this is just my philosophy if you're not making money in your sleep and you're not really making money like you got to go out and work for your money you, you ain't there yet you know you got to make that mm -hmm. money work for you yep yep and the idea of me having my own production company along with my studio that will make me money because i will always have something going on always right then you know people can rent you can rent it out to people so you like ain't that's the dope part about being your own boss. It's just like, shit, man, I don't feel like working today. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm just going to go travel for like two weeks right. and I'll be back. You know? The beauty of it, because it's like people ask me, why do I want to do it? And I'm like, I'm not going to say it's not about the money because that's stupid. Accomplishments and accolades don't pay the bills. It, of course, some of it is about the money, but it's also about freedom to do what you want to do. To me, requesting time off is the stupidest thing ever. No, I'm telling you, I'm not going to be here. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be on a plane, so you can call me like, where you at? I'm at gate 8 11. Um, I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> well, I definitely think college is the biggest scam ever, no matter what it might be. You might, you have, there's a lot of shysters out here getting you. Um, there's a lot of people getting over, but colleges, they're really getting over on kids because you're charging them triple. And I mean damn near triple for an experience that they can really live almost by themselves and like just said, live apart. I've been in college for two years. I don't learn more about business in six months than I did on my own in the two years with these professionals that they given however many hundreds of thousands of dollars to with my tuition money. I don't even know yeah. where my tuition goes. I know where my tuition goes. I was pissed off. I remember my first semester of college, 2020. Um, I was looking at it. It was like the college, the tuition itself is like four thousand dollars. Then they added a bunch of fees, and it's like it come out to like five. So my first year of college, uh, this was twenty twenty. So athletics were canceled. Why was I paying a thousand dollar athletic fee? Where was it going? We don't even have no athletics. Y'all just want money now. I got no words. I, I really don't. Um, I'm just glad that I got through my experience. I got my sheet of paper, and I don't even use it. You got your paper, Will? Test it. Yo, see, we feel we don't have to do a part two because <laughs> that's another crazy thing. Like a lot of people get degrees and then don't even use them. Mm -hmm. Yep, I don't use it. But then I went back um, 
and I got a certificate, and then, and then I got a, um, a what you would call it, for my job that I do now. So it was like I had to learn the hard way because when I when I was in high school, that's what we were all talking about: going to college, party, and have a good time. And when I went to college, it was a little different because we didn't have social media. We was just starting to come into social media. So it's a little different for me than it is how kids are going in now. Even right. kids maybe five that graduated maybe five, six years ago. But still, college is the same experience everywhere. It's just way, way overpriced. And even you got these politicians saying, oh, well, tuition should be free. Who the fuck's going to pay for it? Like They can, they can pay for it. Yeah, yeah, they can, but they won't. They won't. <laughs> there they is won't. money. The missiles that y'all be test test practicing that cost like thirty million dollars that y'all just launch into the ocean for practice uh -huh. that could pay a couple people tuition. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yes, it can. But I just look at it like this: college is the biggest scam ever. It will continue to be the biggest scam because it comes down to the fact that if we can charge these these kids and these parents X amount of dollars. And they're going to pay for it. You're paying for a higher education. But what higher education if you still come out dumb as you went in? That's the thing, though, Will. I see. I don't know if it's always going to be a scam. Because I feel like <clears throat> me and you not the only, of course, we're not the only people that think like this. I think it's this whole next generation that's coming up is seeing that it's alternatives to college. You know, it's either you can learn online or do whatever. It's alternatives to college. So I think within the next... 30 or so years, college is going to have to reevaluate. Like, yo, we might have to stop robbing niggas and really start paying them, like, you know, <laughs> start charging them a decent amount of, like, a, you know, a regular amount of money. Cause I, like I said, I don't think they'll ever go out of business because you still need doctors and lawyers and degrees and jobs mm -hmm. that really require a degree yes. from the institution. But I don't know. It's definitely time for reformation. Um, I don't know. Maybe you could do. We could do that with our businesses. We can fight the it. I mean, no, my businesses. I'm just. I'm going to not. And not that I say that I won't, because I still enjoy my career that I'm in. Mm -hmm. Um, but I want to do less and less of it because it's almost like I'm tired of punching someone else's clock. I want to punch my own. I want to just be able to wake up when I wake up. You know, go to my studio, make what I want, book other people so they can pay me, and just be able to live like that freelancer life. Be able to work I want to. two hours a week and be like, you, you ain't got to worry about nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just nothing. have a nice week to where I can make an average of you know two stacks and I'll be okay. At least, uh, at least work three days where i could pay all my bills for the month like uh this one comedian i love who i love 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 his name is earthquake been doing it for 25 years I love he earthquake. says yes he says in one weekend he can pay his bills for three months that's that's, mm -hmm. that's the like, yes that's the goal that's what's mm -hmm. going on. That's what we doing well we yes i know i know so that's why i i've been so diligent and just so persistent about looking up as much as i possibly can and when i get everything i need i'll go out and find my niche because i'm having a photography business i'm going to take pictures whether i go to weddings whether i go to music venues whatever but then i can get out more then i can see what i normally don't see and then through my production company i can hire freelancers to come in you know do the edits do the sounds do everything that way i can do bigger projects like like i said i've become a real forward thinker about this because only i can change my future no one else can change it and no one else is going to dictate it so if i don't want to push that clock that's on me not anybody else right. so i look at it like college didn't help me figure this out life did saying here like my big one of my favorite quotes is by ralph waldo emerson it says the only people we're destined to be are the people we choose to be absolutely like yep. they did yo the ball is in your court and it's your life it's your life to live it's not your parents life your yo your husband's wife your, your wife's life it's it's your life to live so don't mm -hmm. you don't want to look back when you on your deathbed like dang i should have did this i should have did that you want to look back and be like yo i did that it was fun I did it. I was the best at it. And yeah. Uh-huh. Definitely. 
Well, man, I can say this has been a really intriguing conversation. It was. We need to do a part two of this. We do. Not for real. I didn't think we was going to go where we went, but we went there and now I'm ready to stay, but we ain't going to stick. We got to go back to where we came from. <laughs> So, um, if they want to be able to find you, bro, how can they get a hold of you? Y'all can find me on Instagram at the All Over Podcast. That's my podcast Instagram. Or you can follow me personally at Zion Devel, Zion underscore Devel. That's Z I O N underscore D D A V E L L E. I forgot to spell my middle name for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, okay. Well, I appreciate you talking with me, man. It is always a pleasure, you know, chop it up with you, especially something like this. Every single time, man. Yeah, because I saw your post. I'm like, okay, what is this brother on? Something going on? So. <laughs> I was just like, cause it was, I was just, I just came from, well, you called me when I was at work and I was just like, this is how, well, I literally, I'm a security guard. I get paid to sit around and do nothing and I was miserable, bro. Like, it's just the fact that I have to be here doing what somebody else want me to do, even though I'm not doing nothing. It's like, I just, I want to be able to do my own thing, work when I want, you know? Uh huh. I hear you. I hear you. Well, man, stay on. We can talk for a little bit more. But thank you so much for uh, coming through, chopping up with me. I do appreciate you, bro. I yes, really sir. do. All right, man. Yes, folks. So that was a great conversation great episode of sarcasm orgasm we talked about what is the biggest scam in this world is college yes it is college can't say enough him and i we went through it tried gave our our opinions our views on it so you just try to figure out if you agree or disagree it is all up to on you but remember you can make your outcome bigger and better if you just Put your mind to it. You can do anything you want to. And sometimes you don't even have to go to college to figure that out. You know, we all have different roles, different paths. But it's up to you to figure out what you want to do. So this has been another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasm. I was joined by my guest, Mr. Zion DeVille from the All Over Podcast. So thank you so much for listening and tuning in. I'm Will and I'll talk to you all soon.